Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with another pretty exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating some pretty cool science fiction planets really fast. So anyways, let's jump right in and get started. Alright, so I'm going to open up a new scene in Blender. I'm going to hit A and X to delete everything. Then I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, and add in an Icosphere. Go ahead and open up this little panel right here, and I'm going to turn up the subdivisions to maybe 4. Right click, Shade Smooth, scale it up to 5, and uh, then we're going to add some lighting. Let's go ahead and switch to our rendered view right here. Go to your world settings, set the background to black because space is mostly black. Shift A and I'm going to add in a sun lamp. Rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. Then I'm going to turn up the brightness of this maybe to 8 or something like that. And uh, I know it's not completely accurate to have the planet as a sphere. You might want to try adding in a plane. Now we're going to add a material. Go to your material settings, hit new. I'm going to go image texture. And on my desktop, I've got some textures here, a planet texture. I will provide this texture in the description if you want to use it. And uh, yeah, this is what we get. If you tab into edit mode and hit U, sphere projection, and then open up a new panel here, switch to the UV editor. I'm going to go A, S, X, and then 2. And that's going to look a little more realistic. Now switch this to the shader editor. Now you can see that our specular is not changing at all. It's very smooth and flat and uh, not at all what we want. So let's add in a couple more image textures. I'm going to go pull this one out, Shift D to duplicate this twice. Open this second one right here. I'm going to open the specular. Go ahead and plug this specular in right here. And you can already see that it looks a lot better. Now I'm going to go and grab the roughness and plug this in right here. Now this planet isn't uh, super shiny and if you want to change that you can. Just go Shift A Converter and add in a color ramp. I'm going to leave it like it is though because I think it looks completely fine. I'm going to add one more texture, Shift D. This is going to be some bump. Vector bump, you wouldn't really see any bump if you were actually looking at Earth from space. It's going to look a lot cooler if you add it anyways. Set this to maybe 0.01. And that looks pretty good. You can try plugging in this one instead if you want to. Alright, so now that we've got this, we need to add some clouds. I'm going to hit Shift D, S to scale this up just a bit, and then I'm going to hit this little 2. Call this clouds. Let's delete pretty much everything. All this and this. Shift A, shader, mix shader. Plug that in there, then we're going to add in a diffuse and a transparent. I'm going to plug this right here into the mix factor and then add in a converter color ramp. And uh, then I'm going to go over to our material settings and set this blend mode to alpha blend. If you were to turn up the white value, you would see that our clouds are sort of appearing. Now, right now we're using the actual planet texture as clouds, which isn't terribly realistic. Instead, I'm going to open a different texture, and I'm just going to use the specular um, from this other planet texture. It should work fine. If you tab into edit mode and do maybe a cube project, then I'm going to maybe flip these. And yeah, that looks pretty decent as clouds, I think. If you turn this contrast up a little bit. I think that looks quite nice. Now I'm going to duplicate this sphere one more time and we're going to create the atmosphere. So scale it up again just a little bit. Hit this 2 and we're going to call this atmosphere. And I'm going to leave everything the way it is except I'm going to delete this and this. Then add in an input and this is going to be a layer weight node. Plug the facing value into the mix shader. Then add a converter color ramp, and you can see we're already getting some atmosphere effects. You notice there's some artifacts right here on the outside of the planet. That's fairly easy to fix. Just go over here and choose backface culling, and that should go away. I'm going to zoom into the side of the Earth right here, the planet, whatever it is, and then we're going to edit this color ramp a little bit. So drag this white value forward and add a, another black right here behind it. 
I'm going to choose B spline because that's easier to work with and then drag this forward. And you'll notice we are now getting some nice smooth fall off here at the edge of the planet. You can open this up a little if you want to, or you can just leave it closed, add in a second ramp and sort of drag that over. That's probably what I'll do. And that looks pretty decent. Now we can change the color of the atmosphere. I'm going to go with a uh, bluish color. And I think that looks quite nice. It looks pretty realistic. So now let's try to get that epic lighting we had in the final render from this video. So I'm going to turn everything back on with Alt Shift Z. And then I'm going to grab a camera. And we're going to go to the front view, Control Alt Numpad 0. Put this maybe something like this. Choose our rendered view again. And that looks pretty cool, but it's not quite what we want. So let's rotate this light on the z-axis a bit till we get something like this. Now let's select all the parts of our planet. So the atmosphere and the planet itself. And let's hit Alt-D. Scale it down a bit. We'll put it maybe right here. So it's actually casting a shadow on this other planet. And let's mess with the lights. I'm going to... I'm going to add in a light, and this is going to be a spotlight. Let's put this up here, and I'm going to put it right over the other planet, this one. And I'm going to turn its strength up, and I'm going to make it a nice bluish color. Maybe rotate it a little bit. It's really just about getting the positioning exactly right. Something like that looks pretty decent to me. Shift D instead of Alt D now, because we want to change the color of this one. Put it underneath and let's make it a red and we'll go something like that maybe we can rotate this one forward a bit so it encompasses a little more of the planet then we'll go shift D to duplicate this and turn its strength way up. I'm going to try 5000 yep something like that maybe a little further underneath now let's add some fill shift A light and point and this point light's going to be something like right here. I'm going to set it to a purple and turn its strength up. And then we'll turn its radius up as well so that we don't get the same um, specular highlight from it. So now let's select our sun lamp. I'm going to choose solid view and go to our sun lamp. I'm going to choose contact shadow, turn up the distance a little. And then we've got uh, a couple values here. I'm going to turn the softness all the way off. Go to the render settings, and I'm going to go under shadows and change this from ESM to VSM. Then I'm going to turn this one from 1024 to 2048. If your computer can't handle it, it's fine. Uh, it shouldn't really need to. It looks decent as is. Now you can mess around more with this atmosphere if you want to. So if you grab the big planet's atmosphere and let's just go shift D and then hide it and then delete the old one to uh, make it so that these two objects aren't linked anymore. And then let's go hit this two and I'll call this atmosphere volumetric. Let's scale this sphere up a bit, and then let's open our shader editor again. I'm going to delete everything here, add in a volume scatter. If you plug that into the volume, then this entire area is going to fill with um, volume scatter, a big cube. That's not exactly what we want. Let's go Shift A, Texture, and Gradient Texture. Plug this into the density. Then let's grab this gradient texture and add in a texture coordinate. If you plug in object, that should put it right here at the center point of this object. Now you can go here and you can choose spherical. And that should fit just like this. Then you can scale it down. and turn the density up. Shift A, Converter, Math Node, set this to Multiply and turn the density up. Then let's change some volumetric settings. 
I'm going to go here and I'm going to go under volumetrics. I'm going to change this from 8 to 4. And I'll turn on volumetric shadows. Mostly this is going to be for cycles. So if you switch to cycles, you can see that the volumetrics have really taken over completely. I'm going to change this down to maybe 100. Yeah, and that looks a lot nicer. The volumetrics also look much more realistic. If you make this a nice blue color, then you'll get a little bit of a sunset here and some realistic light scattering. So you can see that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to say it looks cooler than uh, the one that is just a simple layer weight, but it does look a lot different and gives it a completely different feel. I'm going to render out both versions in Cycles and Eevee and we can test and see which one looks better. Alright, so I rendered out both versions. I have Cycles with Volumetrics, which looks pretty good, and then we have Eevee with Volumetrics, which honestly looks really awful. I think it looks the worst of all of them. And then we've got Cycles without Volumetrics, which looks okay, but if you're not using Volumetrics, I would just recommend using Eevee because it looks uh, fantastic and will work perfectly fine. It's also real time, so I guess that's a plus. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and join the Iridesium community and post your work there. I would absolutely love to see it, and if you have things you need help with, I'm sure the community would be very happy to help. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.